Hey everybody, this is Dave and welcome to my unboxing and review of the Vantech Nexstar HX4R. This is a 4 bay external hard drive RAID enclosure. It supports JBOD RAID 0, 1, 3, 5, and 10. It can handle up to 12 terabytes of storage and I'll be using my four 3 terabyte Western Digital RED drives. Before we start, let me explain a little bit about RAID. RAID is defined as redundant array of independent disks, or redundant array of inexpensive disks, depending on who you ask. Here are some common terms used with RAID. Redundancy, or parity, is basically a backup copy. Mirror is copy of contents from one drive to another. Striping is a copy of contents spread out over multiple drives. This enclosure can be set at JBOD, which stands for just a bunch of drives. So when you put these four drives into the enclosure, you'll get four separate volumes show up on your computer. RAID 0 puts the 12 terabytes into one volume on your computer. It's high performance, highly cost efficient, but if one of the drives fails, you lose everything. RAID 1 can only be used with two drives. Basically, you mirror the contents of one drive to the other drive. And if one of the drives fails, you just replace it with a new drive and you rebuild your volume. With six terabytes, you only get three terabytes of storage because the other drive is used for parity. Average performance, high redundancy, but not cost efficient. RAID 3 is not worth mentioning because it's hardly ever used. RAID 5, in which I'll be using with this enclosure, stripes all of the data across all of the drives. So if one of the drives fails, you just replace it and it will rebuild it. You get average performance, high redundancy, and it's very highly cost efficient you get nine terabytes out of the 12 terabytes you have. Lastly, there's RAID 10, which is a combination of RAID 1 and RAID 0. So basically, you mirror contents from one drive to another, and then it's striped over to the other remaining drives. Very high performance, very high redundancy, but it's not cost efficient because you only get six terabytes out of the 12 terabytes you have. So let's put these drives aside and let's take a look around the box and in the box and I'll explain a little bit more on why I bought this hard drive enclosure over a NAS, a traditional NAS. Because I have a pogo plug and I'm going to connect the pogo plug to this next star and we're going to turn it into a network attached storage. So make sure you subscribe and let's continue on with our video. Here's the front of the box. This is the left side of the box. And the right side of the box. And the rear of the box in multiple languages. Okay, let's open up the tab. And we'll lift this right up. And the first thing we see is a CD, which has some software for drivers and utilities. And we also have a guide about your storage and an installation guide that opens up. At the top here, we have some foam. We have a power cord. We have a power brick. comes with the USB 3.0 connection. You can see that there. And it also comes with the eSATA cables that you can hook to a card. We have some mounting screws. And we have the unit itself. Put it aside for a second. And it also got some spacers here that you put in so that the drives, when you put them in the trays, they're not so wobbly. 
and we'll put the box to the side. And now let's take a look at the unit. Wrapped in the plastic. Always the best part of an unboxing is that plastic noise. So here we have the unit. It's a brushed aluminum black and everything else is plastic. Up on top you have the 80 millimeter uh, outtake fan. You have intake vents along the bottom and you have some status lights and the power light that will come on when you plug the unit in. Here's the side. And in the back is the actual trays. It has an unlock feature so that they lock in place. You just clip it and you pull it out. Now this looks a little cheesy. There's two screws that go on on each side and it holds the drive. And you basically slide the drive right back in. So we'll show you that in a little bit. Down at the bottom here you have the power for 12 volt. You have the USB 3.0. eSATA is here. And then you also have the RAID switches in which you have to slick the different jumpers. You have a power button. And here you have the adjustment for the vent. If you're in a hot room, you keep it all the way up. If you're in a colder room, maybe during the winter, uh, you lower it down a little bit, depending on the heat of your drives. On the side here, we have a little diagram of the different RAID modes you have to set with the jumpers. So let's put these four drives in and hook it up to our computer and we'll give it some speed tests. The instruction says to pull out the tray and use this little foam piece with the sticky on one side and place it right onto the inside of the little tray, little foam there. And then basically just put it onto the drive like this and put the screws in the two holes and then place it directly back inside the unit itself. I got my power, my USB 3.0, I got the jumper set with number two in the up position. One is down, two is up, three is down, four is down. And that's for RAID 5. Okay, so now we'll hit the power button. Now these four dialogues will pop up. You can basically ignore them for now. Uh, but you'll see that in Disk Utility, you have four separate drives, even though you have the jumper set to RAID 5. So to fix this, so you need to pin this little hole for three to five seconds, and then it will turn into a RAID 5 enclosure. Okay, I'm going to hold the reset button for three to five seconds. And this dialog will pop up. Hit initialize. You'll see now that the drive is all one drive, nine terabytes. And you can go ahead and set it to any format you like. You can also rename it. I'm going to call mine HX4R. Hit erase. Erase, and now you're going to see on the desktop your drive will mount, and in Finder, you'll see it here. It's nine terabytes ready to use. Now, I'm using this with the Pogo plug. It says that you have to use drives that are NTFS FAT, HFS Plus, EXT2, EXT3. In the next video, we'll hook this up to the Pogo plug and turn this drive enclosure into a network attached storage. We'll figure out what format and what RAID works best. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button and I'll see you on our next video. Thank you.